for the infrastructure of everything else. We have a deadline of the 28th of this month for all the, the remaining seven counties that we've got to come up with. So, um, um, is this not, not, not a way, not a way being one of them, so. We had put him in touch with Tanner Crew. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I think he and Wade had spoken because, you know, we were making kind of a joint application. Um, before David came in the picture, I think Jennifer Day or Jennifer Hardy and I, Jennifer applied, put that pre application together. I think we have some concerns about whether or not we'd be successful because we're considered to be served areas. And the tobacco commission is looking for unserved areas. Now, I can't say we're served to the level of satisfaction that everybody speed wise that would mm -hmm. like. Um, but I'm not 100 percent sure that we will be successful with that and it's a 50-50 grant match. Uh, Amelia and County received it recently and they're putting up seven hundred thousand dollars to put up a series of towers. Um, and, and the thing about this is it's not I mean there's no bureaucracy involved other than you giving us permission to use the towers in, in the town. Uh, that's that's it. Um, in doing so uh, I spoke with the Deputy Town Clerk mm -hmm. in Boynton today, and she didn't have any reservations about saying it's a service. She had some things about the, there's a free Wi-Fi that you gotta put, your put in your. She didn't like that too yeah. all much, but uh, as far as the quality of the service, I think it's been a positive uh, response. Um, there's a couple things, and if you look at that little handout we gave you, there's actually an agreement or an indemnity agreement attached to it. And that's what has been signed between the Town of Boynton and uh, Lake Country. We don't. We don't manage our own towers, so don't you have to get... We don't have to have their permission, but we refer everybody. The first thing that David did was contact Utility Services Correct. about getting on, and there was a pretty hefty monthly charge to go on the tank. And I don't think David wanted the out-of-pocket expense, so I proposed to him the internet service in exchange uh, for the town. What is, I mean, just because we don't ever deal with that, what is the monthly charge? Minimal $500 a month. That was for to, to per, pay per them per water tower. Per tower. To so pay a thousand dollars a month. Would we get anything no, we out? No, we would get some of that. Yeah. We would get some of it. Right. They but take a cut out of it. I don't want to push the exact figure, but what is the benefit of having utility services manage our towers? It's more the frequencies, and the more it's the science of it. I don't know if AT and T is going to conflict with Verizon and that sort of thing. They go out and actually find customers. But on the real side, we're not really having antennas on. Uh, I think they're knowledgeable, and I'm not. And I don't know gotcha. if anybody on staff is really knowledgeable yeah. about how do we construct these antennas and put them on here and, and not conflict with one another. And anything that David would propose to do cannot conflict with any of our existing stuff. Yeah. It's got to be, it, it has to go through a clearing uh, to make sure that we're not going to cut off anybody's phone service or anything like that. Yeah, and when we when we we have a, a database with the FCC that we register, um, and when we put the information in there for what tower or what location we want to go on, um, they're going to come back and they'll say no, you can't, um, or yes, you can. You know, or actually they don't say yes, but they come back and they say no, you can't use this location because there is a conflict. Um, and then usually with the conflict, um, it's just a matter of. Um, even when there is a conflict, you can be on the same frequency. You just have to, there's some other coding that, that goes in there that says, okay, this radio is this number um, and different sub-frequencies that you use. So there's ways, ways of, of doing it. Okay, so <clears throat> if utility services was going to charge him $500 per tank, how do we let him do it for less? How do we let him do it for free? Well, or for the internet for the town? We own the tanks. Correct. So we can make the decision. So we can make it, but so then but what we don't want to do is create conflict between yeah. the carriers. We just don't want that to be the case. So utility services will handle that. Well, well that, that was one thing I was going to ask, and no offense, I, I like the plan. But don't you have to? Don't we have to put it out for bid? I mean, doesn't this have to be solicited? Are there other companies that do it? I think if we were paying out of pocket for something, we would have to do it. Yeah, there's, there's other people that do it. There's a fellow in the media. Procurement is what wireless. do we have to do procurement is what I was. I don't think you have to do procurement. But if you'd be more comfortable putting That's out the only thing that I, I, I think it's great. But I'm just leery of what if someone comes up and goes, hey, hold on, you. Uh, I'd, I'd like to do it too. Yeah. And maybe but, then. That was one of the conversations we had. We're not asking for exclusivity. Um, we're just trying to bring this service to rural towns Correct. just to better, 
you know, better the environment. I mean, I welcome the competition. I mean, if somebody else wants to come in and, and compete with us, you know, because that's when fine. you do it. And you say it's open to anybody. It's open within these parameters, and um, uh, people want to use the, the, the tank space or the tower space, and we can make it available to folks. But what I would do is do this on like a one year trial. Okay. I talked to David earlier and he was agreeable with that. Is this anything to do with the company that approached us? Not, I'm not saying that you're tied with them, but they wanted to use our light poles. What was, what were they looking to do? I don't even remember what that. I think their company was named Excel. Mobility. Mobility, excuse me. They, and uh, they wanted to use certain poles. That was poles strictly for cell phone. Though. Okay, that was that cell, was phone. Like a cell phone. To increase your cell phone usage. They wanted right. to use the utility poles. But after council agreed to two or three sites, they then made they an agreement and had 30. 30. And then they wrecked a tower at the rescue squad. I remember that. It was on a temporary basis and uh, see if the technology works. I'm not even sure. It was very confident. I, I don't know that much about uh, gigabytes and terabytes. But. The name water tower over at Babs Lane, uh, there's nothing on that right now. Um, matter of fact, the, the fiber, you know, I picked the fiber up off the ground over there today that had been mowed over <laughs> and hung it up um, and called Mid-Atlantic and said, hey, uh, you know, is this is this the fiber? Is there any customers on it? Because if there is, you know, the fiber's laying here in the ground. They said, no, there's, it's dark right now. So, but she said, well, you know, we, we can light it up with no problem. But so how do you you have to pay them, obviously. We, 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 pay, we pay everything. So, you know, we contract middle Well, we, we go through GCR, which is um, South Boston Company. They're, they're our ISP. Um, so we contract them for the Internet. Um, depending on the price that we can get, um, you know, we have a negotiated rate for Boynton and Clarksville, but because those were strictly Microsoft projects, yeah. they were heavily discounted. Um, so I've, I've got a request in to... Um, GCR to give me a quote on what it's going to cost us for for the various um, types of fiber. Um, it may be that we start out with the with a smaller fiber um, and then go up from there, um, depending on you know sign how many people up. sign up and how quickly we build it out. So we go from here is um, you'll be coming to the meeting. Tomorrow. Yes, ma'am. Or do you guys know what's going on okay. committee-wise? You don't have to make a recommendation. It's a little new. Um, but we would present to you a indemnity agreement of sorts, like uh, Boynton has. Um, and I do think putting a time limit on it, so if one party or the other is dissatisfied, we can, we can divorce if we have to. Um, as far as procurement, if the town's out of pocket spending money, yeah, I think you've got a procurement issue. Uh, I don't think we're making an exclusive or a particularly long term. I think this is almost experimental. Mm -hmm. We'll see. And uh, see how it turns out. Yep, we'll bring it to the full council for the indemnity agreement that we're using the time. Can you, in the meantime, just budget wise, I would like to know what are we spending on internet services for currently in our town facilities? I don't know if it's thousand dollars a month, but it's it's several. We know, I just want to know. I mean I'm not trying to get anything extra out of you. Right, I just right. want to see how can we save in the budget. Being mm -hmm. chairman of finance, I'd like to I'll know. Get, uh, Jennifer already told us she can throw bills. Gotcha. Yeah. Can we throw? Does uh, DBI get free in that too? Yeah. Town owned property. It's town owned property. Yeah. Correct. The only, town, the only town owned property that would be questionable would be the wastewater and water plants. I think we pay for ticket for internet service out yeah. there, but I don't know if it'll be covered distance wise. And I don't think it's so closer than you think. I mean, it's really it's outside the three mile radius. I oh, it is. There, so okay. Well, we we can actually if if the elevation is correct, um, we can shoot twenty five miles. You know, we can do a point to point. So I mean, um, I bet on top of the water tower, you can probably see the wastewater treatment plant. Yeah. There's no man, there's no big hills between here and there. Yeah, if you can see the wastewater treatment plant from yeah, up there, then you should be good. The, the the key is just at the wastewater plant getting up. Is there any type of antennas or a line silo there? Where an antenna Perfect. Is logical. And it's a three or four story building, four story. Yeah, it's a pretty okay. big building. So it's an appreciable structure. Something that's above the trees that, that we can get a line of yeah, sight, line a clear of sight. line of sight. Because um, our LTE probably won't go that far, but, um, you know, we have other technologies point to point that goes. Um, so so we, when y'all talked about this, is this all town-owned buildings that he's going to provide it to? I think that was the intention. Is that what? Yes. So like the PD here, wastewater? Is there any way, because we pay a fortune for 
flat back cards from the police department a year. Yeah, maybe a how can is it. there technology to reduce our bill for that? I'm not trying to get everything free out of you, but right. Um, yes, we are. <laughs> I mean, we pay a fortune for sprint cards or whatever they are. And yeah. is that is that here in town or? Yeah, we only obviously only operate within the town limits, but okay. each car has an air card. Gotcha. Um, at this point, no. However, um, part of the CBRS um, technology that that the FCC is changing, um, it will. They are opening up the frequency for mobility. Um, so in the future, um, there will be mobility able to be on this. Now, whether again, whether that's going to work with a mobile police car. Yeah. Um, now I do, I, I'll tell you in my car, you know, I take the antenna and this is how I test, you know, I lay it up on my dash and I drive around with my laptop and, I, and I'm looking, looking at the signal level. Um, some areas it doesn't work um, because of just, uh, you know, you're down in a hole. Um, so with, with the police cars, you want I, reliability. You want reliability yeah. So at this point, I, 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 I just know I see that yeah. bill every month for air cards, and they're not cheap. But um, there, there's the technology is changing. So um, I did see something the other day came across um, where there was antennas that for on cars and stuff like for for mobility in the future. So um, one last thing, I'll just let you all know. Um, I was featured in, and I'm not patting myself on the back, but I was featured in Virginia Business Magazine um, for the work that we did in. Um, with Microsoft in the town of Boynton. So just as, you know, some credibility, exactly. So, um, and Microsoft came back to us for a second project, so as well for Clarksville. So um, Microsoft, it's a very good company. Get Microsoft here to build a facility as well? We'd really, we'd give it to you. I'll tell you what, it's, it's, uh, they're, the, the, they started, massive facilities. they started out in Boynton, gosh, seven or eight years ago, and, um, you know, they just keep on building. I mean... They need to expand up here. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, hey, they, they just keep we'll, on building. We'll pay for our services to each town <laughs> building if you can get boy, if you can get Microsoft to buy it. Can we get you free get armor. Armor. in the clerk's house? The <laughs> <laughs> clerk's house. She has no internet. Town buy house for a <laughs> You might want to buy it. Microsoft might so want to buy it on Appreciate it. <laughs> okay, we have one last item. Last item in women. Uh, is in attendance today. This is something that Wayman and I and I think Barbara had talked about some time ago. I don't know if you guys are familiar. We probably need to take a ride out there at some point. Um, I believe it's called Green Hill Cemetery. Which Green is View. Green View Cemetery, excuse me. And it's located out on Rocky Bump Road. And um, there's two portions of the cemetery, one of which is operated by Michael Hawk's Funeral Home, and that's more that portion of the cemetery which abuts uh, West Entrance Road. Okay, the older section really has very little maintenance taken care of. There's, it's really overgrown and, and really needs some regular maintenance of some sort. There needs to be some kind of a program. There's still people that have been buried there fairly recently, but man, the grass is waist high and it's just not appealing. It's not, There's not several good. Several groups that have gone out there. I went one time and they actually go out there and try to get some of it cut back to, but it is. It's, it's brushy. It's not Trees growing it's, up in the. Yeah, trees and all that sort of stuff. So um, I do believe that there is a potential opportunity to get from the state. They have a fund for African-American cemeteries that are unmanaged or un unmaintained if there are certain conditions met. And those conditions that I've read in the state code, and we can look them up anytime you want, I can distribute the code, um, that if the grades are older than 1900, and I don't know if that's the case here, that it would automatically qualify for some revenues from the state during the course of the year. There's a, a like a maintenance fund of some sort. But irregardless of whether we can do that or not, um, and it's not an obligation of the town, but I do think we've got a facility out there uh, that's just poorly maintained. And um, do we have to do anything? No. Nope. But I do think if no one else will step forward, um, maybe this is one of the things where government because this is not going to be a money maker for anybody. Um, yeah, right. It is one of the times where government does have a role in getting involved in something. I think something. we can, by general consensus, say check and see if the graves, if there are any that are pre-1900. And I wouldn't be surprised if there probably is. Yeah. I mean, There may be. But what I was thinking of, if there are not any specific graves that are before 1900, I do think that there were perhaps were some folks that were reinterred there when Fort Pickett came in in the 1940s that may have been relocated there. If we can somehow... 
I don't know where the records are. I don't know how to find the records. But uh, if we can somehow prove that some of them perhaps were from Fort Pickett that were relocated out there, those may get. I think a lot of them went to Butterwood Church. Yeah, oh, I know Butterwood Church. I mean, but, but the, the, they were managed by the town of by the county of Amelia. In Amelia, yeah. Okay. So you're saying records could be in Amelia for that? The records are there, pardon? Records could be in Amelia for that's, that's what they are. Well, yeah, they started in Amelia, but something happened. They, they I'm doing this on, I'm doing this on, on the black history for what you call the Black Sabbath Church. How we all started together and separate due to some of these things that we talk about now. You know, the church uh, after 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 the the city when no one committed uh, segregation or any of that kind of stuff. So the, the two the two churches broke up and black uh, black Stone Baptist went one another way, went toward the meeting because George uh, did with him and strange thing else they in, in this area. Then when Blackstone got up to me, and I'm gonna get with him, they split again. So Blackstone uh, turned back here, and the church went separate. So I had about three or four separation there. Hmm. And, and, and it, it had to do with the cause of Fort Pickett breaking up the things back in the And, and where did you say the records were in the million? At Fort Ellis. <laughs> so you said the uh, graves had to be 1900. Yeah. The state code says if the, the graves are older than 1900, older than 1900, then it would be eligible for a maintenance fund for just this kind of purpose. Too. Mm -hmm. It's not a lot of money. It's like a dollar or dollar and a half a grave annually. And, uh, yeah. So it's yeah, not a tremendous the amount. Would they move, right? Pardon? Would that be something that they would move? Well, I don't know. I, 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 I'd have, have to find out. It just it's says 1900. Not go back that far. It's not go back that far. The original version. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That may be a good yeah. <clears throat> I'm asking. We have maybe uh, with with a lot of different community groups. We've got the ministerial association. Um, we have the veteran groups that have helped in the past. Mm -hmm. um, maybe yeah. even Ottawa County would, would. I think we can do better than having a cemetery that looks like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Even though it's inside the county and not in the town. The well, church, the church would, could help. Uh, they would help down a period. I know they help over there. <laughs> oh. <laughs> the government, uh, before they had committed to take care of this kind of place like that. And in fact, when I came here to Spring Hill in the 70s, Spring Hill, the person who took care of them had died. So that's when I checked it out, found out that, that most of the church, of the graves out there at, uh, in Jim Lee had been thrown up like this one here. And then they would do chop, cut down trees and, and, and use that money to clean it. But now it's going back to the same place where it started before. So maybe, maybe Nottawa County will participate somehow. Maybe we can address them. Mm -hmm. um, but I think if we just continue to leave it up to a volunteer type situation and somebody doesn't take the lead, mm -hmm. I think it does probably they lose momentum. Mm -hmm. And then we'll be right back where we are. What's what 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 There's one grave over there. The tree is grown up in the grave. Mm -hmm. And you can't mess around that Graves, can you like that? Cutting, going up in the grave, cutting down trees and Shoot stuff. People bury their urns now, planting trees. Mm -hmm. so. <laughs> but no, that's not the spot. For well, certainly, getting the grass cut and get the the old wreaths and debris and stuff. The day mm -hmm. you and I rode out there, I'd like it so that you guys know what we're doing. Um, if we contact the county, notify Ronnie. Would you be interested in assisting uh, Mr. Vaughn? I guess it's in his uh, district, mm -hmm. and see if there's a way we can. Clean it up. Get that some grass cut. That would be so wonderful. On a regular basis, not one time. Mm -hmm. Find a way to create mm -hmm. a long-term solution to getting this done, working with the state. Yeah, that would be beautiful. Somebody. But I think I think we can do better than, than that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you. Look for an update from you on that. Mm -hmm. uh, there's no any further business. I will now adjourn the meeting. Six thirty eight. Six thirty eight. My wife's waiting on me too. So. Oh, what a boring meeting. <laughs> How boring was that?